National Park Service finds Rudy Moda, hiker missing for 38 years. Even the most experienced of adventurers take an enormous amount of risk when they venture out into the wilderness, and it's impossible to know for sure what dangers or freak accidents might lurk around the corner, especially for those who prefer to wander intentionally into the dangers of the beaten path. Rudy Moda was one of these brave explorers who unfortunately met an untimely end as the result of misfortune met on a ski mountaineering trip. Moda was a West German man living in Fort Collins, Colorado at the time of his disappearance in 1983. He was an avid outdoorsman and was experienced in navigating the backwoods of the area, so when he embarked on a two to three night ski mountaineering trip, nobody thought anything of it at first. He left for the Zimmerman Lake trailhead near Cameron Pass with intentions of crossing Thunder Pass into Rocky Mountain National Park, but his journey was never completed, and his roommate reported him missing when he had not been seen or heard from six days later. Search and rescue teams were immediately dispatched to attempt to locate the missing man alive, but over a foot of fresh snow had recently fallen, greatly slowing the rescue efforts and dimming what hope the team had. The team searched for four days, with increasing desperation, and although they were able to find signs of the missing hiker and locate his food cache, some gear and a snow cave that he had likely made to seek shelter from the snowstorm that had passed through, they were unable to locate the man himself. Eventually, the searches were called off and, although fresh efforts were made once the snow melted in the spring, no further clues or remains were ever found. His family in Germany were left without answers or any form of closure regarding his disappearance, making the mourning process even more painful. However, 38 years after the fateful hiking trip that cost Moda his life, a hiker passing through avalanche debris near Rocky Mountain National Park's Skeleton Canyon area noticed skeletal remains among the disturbed rocks and vegetation. An investigation began to attempt to determine who the remains belonged to, but was closed shortly after its inception due to the National Park Service's redistribution of resources once a massive wildfire began to encroach on the west side of the park. Once the snowmelt retreated from the area the following year, they were able to reopen the investigation and recover the remains, as well as ski equipment and personal items that belonged to Moda. His identity was confirmed by a German forensic coroner and the National Park Service worked with the German government to quickly repatriate the remains so that Rudy Moda's family could provide him with a proper burial after almost four decades of mystery. Moda's disappearance is a reminder that, although millions of people traipse through national parks every year, at the end of the day they are nothing more than untamed wilderness, and it's entirely possible for a body to go missing within its depths and remain unrecovered and unknown for 38 years or longer. Morgan Heimer Morgan Heimer was a student at the University of Wyoming, studying English. In the summer of 2015, aged 22, Morgan took a job as a commercial guide for a rafting company, Tor West. It was on an eight-day-long group trip that he went missing, and devastatingly, he is yet to be seen since. As I am sure you would expect of someone working with a rafting company, Morgan was a strong swimmer had an impressive working knowledge of the river, and was a seasoned outdoorsman. Despite all these skills under his belt, they seemingly were not enough to keep the students safe on the riverside. The last known sighting of Morgan was on June 2, 2015 by River Mile 213 in the Grand Canyon National Park near to Pumpkin Springs. He reportedly mentioned to the lead guide of the day that he wanted to take a break that afternoon, to have some time to himself. When the lead guide later returned from discussing something with a client, Morgan had left. Simply assuming he had gone on the break, as had been discussed, no immediate red flags were raised by the group. His last sighting was around 4pm, and he was reported missing by 7.26pm that very same day. Suspicions had been raised when he didn't return to the group for dinner following their swimming and other activities. At the time, when the search was initially being conducted, People were incredibly optimistic. It's unfortunately all too common to fail to find people when they have gone astray from their intended and planned routes. The rescue teams knew of Morgenheimer's skill sets, 
and absolutely held out hope. Some said he definitely has the skills and ability to perform the job and be a person we have a high likelihood to find. Following a thorough six-day-long search of the surrounding areas, many people assumed that he had drowned. Employees, clients and other members of this group were all interviewed, though there was never any evidence found that anyone knew any helpful information or could have been maliciously involved. So what happened? Did he slip, fall and drown? Did he get lost wandering through the wilderness? It certainly seems unusual for the tour guide to not be familiar with the area, or at least not be aware of which areas he does and does not know. Some internet theorists have speculated that he is lost within an intricate network of doorways, passageways and paths through the Grand Canyon. Some emphasizing the dangers of overconfidence and others truly implying otherworldly, supernatural explanations. Michael Fissery, Yosemite National Park 51-year-old Michael Allen Fissery, avid hiker, sadly took his last hike on June 15, 2005 in the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir in Yosemite National Park. He had planned the solo journey to cover Rancheria Falls, Tiltil Mountain and Lake Vernon. Fissery was last seen heading up towards the mountain on the Pacific Crest Trail. His family became concerned when he did not arrive back home on June 19th. This date marked four days since Fissery embarked on the hike and also the day his wilderness permit expired. Two days later, on June 21st, his family phoned the park service and the search had begun. The search consisted of professionals from five counties and included aerial searches and rescue dogs. The only thing ever uncovered by the search was a backpack found near Tiltil Mountain, with a topographical map, camera and bottle of water. Fisseroy is still missing to this day and as of 2018 remained on the National Park Service's cold cases list. On April 5th, 2012, seven years after Fissery's disappearance, a comment was displayed in the National Park's Traveller. The author claimed to be Michael's brother, who warns readers about precautions his brother seemed to be missing on his journey. The comment reads, Michael Fissery, the hiker mentioned above who disappeared in Yosemite in 2005, was my brother. While Michael was never reliant upon technology, I firmly believe he was not adequately prepared for his hike in terms of the equipment he did carry. He apparently deviated from his planned route, which made the search much more difficult. I strongly recommend all hikers to consult any variety of pack lists found on the internet, focusing on the 10 essentials. Please make sure to leave a planned itinerary with at least one person and stick to it. Please, if only for the sake of those who are waiting for you at home. Do not attempt even a day hike without being adequately prepared. While Fissery's lack of supplies remains a plausible contributor to circumstances of his loss of life, the lack of evidence is odd. The Park Service spent $452,000 on running a comprehensive search, only to end with only one clue. Searches like this often turn up clothes, equipment or remains. It is also strange that a backpacker with more than 30 years of wilderness experience would leave behind a backpack. So far, no one has been able to offer sufficient motivation for why Fissery would have abandoned supplies in the first place. The Disappearance of Angela Freeman Mama, I love you. I'll see you Friday. Those were the last words that Deborah Freeman ever heard from her daughter. Soon after, the 17-year-old named Angela Freeman told her mother that she was going to spend Thursday night with her friend. However, two days later, the 1984 Honda Accord car that she had just handed her mother a cash payment for was found abandoned near a bridge in Missouri. Angela was nowhere to be found. To make matters even worse, she was four months pregnant at the time. In the beginning, authorities simply shrugged it off as a missing persons case. Even though mobile phones did not exist back then, missing teenagers were bound to show up within a day or two. Yet, that was not the case for Angela. Instead of finding her daughter safe and sound, Deborah found blood on the car instead. In fear, they instantly notified the police. It turns out that what was dismissed as merely transmission fluid. After this, blood was confirmed to be found next to her car. 
After numerous diver and cadaver dog searches around the area, all that was discovered were her shoes found in two separate areas. Suddenly, this case transformed from a disappearance to a homicide. No one could sit around and wait for her to show any longer. The detectives revealed that Angela was last seen outside of an old pizza hut at around 1am on a Friday. Her whereabouts after she'd left couldn't be traced. They suspected that a man who was seen washing his car and hunting near the bridge area was involved, but they did not have enough evidence to confirm anything. No matter how desperate everyone was to find Angela, it seemed that all hope was lost. It has been decades since she said goodbye to her mother on that fateful day of September 8, 1993. Even though Angela herself was so excited to be a mother, she would never be able to realize that dream. However, people like police captain Rusty Keyes have still not given up. In due time, Angela Freeman's disappearance might no longer stay a mystery. But what do you make of these disappearances and the stories behind them? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.